Chairman, I've looked at the minutes and I move for their approval. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, well, we have tonight, we have several departments that uh, did their budgets last month, so we have a consent agenda. And uh, there's four departments there, and uh, we'll take a motion on the consent agenda minus the budget amendment of the MS. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the consent agenda minus the ambulance service budget amendment, which we will vote on. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And if you got any questions, give them to me afterwards and I'll have us an answer at the next meeting. Okay. And we'll ask Mr. Nunley if he can come up for the uh, budget amendment. Thank you. We were asking to uh, transfer some money from contracts with private agencies and the end service staff development, uh, $5,000. What happened was one of the schools backed their paramedic class up a little bit this summer, and so we thought we would have the money in place by, by July the 1st, but um, we're going to need it before then. Make a motion to approve the budget amendment as requested and forward the budget. Second. Is second. Any questions? All the roll, please. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Shaker? Yes. Well, that would be the easiest evening you've ever had. <laughs> First on the list. That may be true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see now. We get domestic violence, Miss Tillage. Good evening. <laughs> so this evening, um, first we would have the report. Um, of uh, annual uh, 2017 and on the report you can see that we um, handled uh, 10,056 cases and then of those uh, 679 were misdemeanor domestic assaults 340 were felony domestic assaults 15 were stalking cases and 22 were violations of orders of protection um, we do, uh, in addition to those cases, handle other cases um, that, that we don't track, um, but they are cases that are handled in our court, um, such as uh, phone harassments, custodial interferences, vandalisms, and preventing another person from making an emergency call. How many people work in your office? We have uh, myself full-time, another full-time advocate, and a part-time advocate, so three. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and we do have a dedicated ADA um, that, that handles these cases. Okay. And the full-time, uh, the other full-time just came on? Last year, okay. or year before last. However, I will say, and I was going to mention this during the budget portion, um, we were able to uh, get some more grant funds that will help to take the other part-time uh, advocate to full-time with this upcoming budget. This budget does not reflect that, um, but uh, it will be updated and be in uh, the mayor's recommendations. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, well, any further questions about uh, the report? If not, we'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Further questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, you want to look at your five-year capital budget plan? Yes, sir. Uh, with regard to the five-year capital budget plan, 
Um, we do not have uh, anything at this time. <laughs> I mean, that's not expensive. So well, that's we're okay. we're go, going into the new courthouse, and, and so we, we don't necessarily have any needs at this time. So we'll look at your budget. Okay, if you look at the budget, um, this is just a continuation budget from what we uh, currently have. Um, and we do not take any funds away from the general fund. Um, if you look at the um, revenue estimate worksheet, it, it comes in a little under um, what we're requesting, but we um, had funds that had not been used that were in surplus, so we still are not taking any funds away from the general budget. Kind of a rainy day fund. Is the decrease in data processing due to moving into the new judicial center? No, sir. Um, that decrease was because we um, used to pay um, government services automation oh, okay. for uh, the information from and the court. And now you're but not with the, to so Yes, right. sir. Any further questions on our budget? You saw that you had 175000 not counting that's coming in, not counting what she has already to, to fill in the budget. So if there's no questions, we'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the budget as presented. A second that. Motion is second. Are there questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Village. Have a good evening. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gregory. So for the month of March, we had 499 animals that came into the shelter. Out of those animals, 83.9% were adopted and 6.1% were euthanized. They gave us a live release rate on our dogs of 93.7%, cats were 92.8% and a 93% overall. You all may have seen the story that was on the news a couple of weeks ago uh, that we did and they claimed that we had not done any euthanasia. We corrected them several times during that. Uh, we had done no euthanasias for space. The only euthanasias that we have done in over a year now are for severe behavior or medical conditions. That's great, Nick. Uh, for the month, we had uh, 1,538 calls uh, received, 1,583 completed. We traveled 11,491 miles. Uh, year to date, we've had 5,251 animals come in and a live release rate of 89.3%. Over on the bite uh, and exposure report. That's phys fiscal year, fiscal last July. Yes. 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 Uh, on the rabies and bite exposure report, uh, we had 30 bites that were reported during the month. Two of those animals were tested, none came back positive. And other exposures, we had seven uh, cases. One of those was tested, and again, uh, not one that's come back as positive. Oh, that is a typo there. Oh, that, that, that one there is our yearly total. So we've had one skunk that was in February, excuse me. That's all the report testing. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the report? I'll make a motion to approve this report as presented. Second. Motion to second. Are there questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Where do you want to start? Would you like to budget amendments next? Yeah, let's get the budget okay. amendments. So several things here to recognize uh, uh, some grant money and moving around money uh, from our donation line and moving around money within our budget. Uh, the first part of the budget amendment is to recognize $2,200 from the Animal Friendly Grant and to put that into our drugs and medical supplies for the surgeries that we've completed. The next item is to recognize $1,000 uh, that was a donation from Channel 4 during the story they did a couple of weeks ago uh, to budget that out 
$300 of that is for heartworm treatment medication. $700 is to purchase a new longer microchip scanner for our officers to use. With uh, the next item is to move $4,500 from the gas pool into our budget to finish out the rest of the year. Next item is to move $7,000 from Paul's donation line into other equipment due to we had re uh, emergency replacement of our washing machine last week. The other one uh, died on us. Second page is uh, to move $500 from office supplies into other, con or, excuse me, move it to office supplies from other contracting services to help us finish out the year for office supplies. Move $500 into our travel line from communication equipment. There was a uh, training that came up that's very expensive uh, in Chattanooga. And very rarely does it come here. It was kind of surprised that it came here. So we're trying to send two folks there where it will be cheaper for them to go uh, versus waiting to send them out of state. And then the last uh, portion of that is what we've done before, which is moving some money from our part-time line item over to our vet services due to the veterinarian that we have that does relief work. Uh, asking to be paid as a contract vet versus a part-time employee. So quite a few there. Just trying to get everything cleaned up. Questions? There's no questions. We'll entertain a motion. I move for its approval. Second. How big a washing machine do you have? It is what they call a 33 pound. It's about six inches shorter than I am. Uh, it's like what you see at a, at a hotel or a commercial laundromat. And we do probably about 10 loads a day, every 365 days a year. Front loader or top loader? It's, it's gotta be it's a front, a front loader. loader. <laughs> it's a front loader, yeah. And this one's almost so tall, you could, it's hard. It would be hard if we didn't have the automatic dispenser to be able to, to okay. put the detergent in. Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. We got one more thing before we get into the budget. Uh, there was a PetSmart grant that had to be applied for by the end of March. I did apply for that. It was, I think, in the neighborhood of 35000 uh, to do some renovating at the shelter. And then I learned today uh, that they released the applications for the Animal Friendly Grant for next fiscal year. permission. So that if everything comes in, we will go ahead and have the approval process done for the mayor's signatures. Request. <laughs> When do you think it's coming back in? I mean, do we need to do that now or it will just wait till it comes in? The PetSmart, they've kind of gotten a little bit finicky on. They're, they want those signature pages back a lot sooner than what they used to. So it, sometimes, depending on when it hits, it could be six, almost eight weeks before we have a meeting to get it approved. Um, the animal friendly, we've got time on. Nothing. Well, there's, they're not matching. You know. Okay. So we can, if you want to, uh, Make the motion to go ahead and uh, approve all signatures and whatever is needed to accept the grants. They come in, and you'll get the yeah, whole. Yep, yeah, they come in. You'll get like the, the thirty-five thousand dollars, and you'll get the whole thing. Or sometimes get a portion. Come, sometimes they'll come back and pair it back. If they do, we'll just have to pair back our project. Okay. So we prepared to request. Make a motion that we approve the request as presented, pending the necessary signatures. Sorry. Okay. A second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. You want to save the capital plan for last, or? If you don't mind, do you mind if we go through the balance scorecard first? Okay. And that kind of gives us a roadmap for where we're heading. All right. uh, we got that on paper. I, I put it on paper just because it's large. I, I didn't know how it would, how it would be on your screens. Uh, this is just a roadmap for our department and some of the things that we're focusing on, some of the things we've done over the last year, some of the things we're gonna be focusing on next year. Of course, I'm, as I'm sure you've already heard in some of the budgets and, you're, and you'll probably hear from others as well, um, some of the employee situations that we're having as far as pay and, and getting folks. Uh, I've got part-time positions that we've had open for quite some time that we're having some difficulties filling. So we're looking at doing uh, some changes there as far as our part-time staff to increase uh, their pay and also it puts them onto the pay scale. Uh, with some of the other positions. 
and then we're looking to reclassify some of our in-house positions uh, to a different pay grade based on what they're doing. Their old job description didn't really include much as far as customer service, but customer service is probably 90% of their job. So it includes that and, and, and gives them a little bit of an increase there uh, on the pay scale. Uh, over on page two, just wanted to point out that from July the 1st of uh, last fiscal year, we've had up until the end of March, we've had 4,640 hours volunteered at the shelter. If we take that over what it's looking like for the rest of the year, we're looking at that, our volunteers being three to four full-time employees uh, in the shelter helping, helping us out with things. Um, third page at the very top, talks about all ACOs having NACA level one and level two training. That's the training that I was talking about that's coming to Chattanooga, so it's, it's cheaper for us to send folks there. One of the things that we put in back, it was July the 1st, uh, we worked with Asanya to make sure that we have some type of agreement in place when we send folks to these trainings. They're, they're pretty expensive to make sure that we have, a, have it prorated over the next year to where if they leave our employment, they have, we recoup those costs. So we're not putting out you know, 500 to to $1,000 depending on where it is and then them leave within a month or two. Um, on down in the middle of the page, uh, it talks about conducting spay and neuter services. Uh, as you know, since I've been here, we've really tried to put a focus on that. I think we're seeing the results of that uh, through our euthanasia rate and our adoption rate. Uh, our 2018-19 request includes taking that part-time budget uh, position for a vet and asking them to take that full-time. Uh, the number of surgeries that we have were backed up. This will give us the opportunity uh, to catch that back up and increase the number of surgeries that we're doing so we continue to have the effect uh, on those rates as discussed. It will also, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're right now we're doing surgeries four days a week. By doing what we're looking at, this will allow us to be able to do surgeries five days a week with overlap where we have two veterinarians working at the same time doing surgeries three days a week. Uh, the budget also includes the money that we've had in there for the last several years for the thousand public surgeries uh, as well. Uh, the following page at the top uh, talks about uh, us continuing to research effective ways to thorough cat control. You know, we started that about a year ago. In 2016, our euthanasia rate for cats was 32.5%. In 2017, our euthanasia rate for cats was 10%. So that program is working. And then at the very bottom of the page, it talks about being good stewards of our resources. We've uh, using uh, money for in last year's budget as well as some grant, ma grant money to supplement that. We, op we opened up on Sundays starting in December, and we also have extended hours now on Saturdays. What this does is allows us, when an animal comes in and has to be held for either three or five business days on a straight hold, we couldn't count Sundays because we weren't open. It, it, uh, business days now for us includes that day, so basically it cuts down at least one day of every animal having to sit in the shelter. When you take and you figure out how much it costs to feed and clean an animal every day, that's significant savings by us being open. So that pays for somebody to work on Sunday? Um, we're open from 12 to 4 for adoptions, and just because we're open for that window, it still counts as a business day because someone could come and reclaim their animal if they chose to. Uh, it's taken some of the things that we've done this year have taken our, our length of stay for an animal in the shelter from around seven days per animal down to the four day range. So we start taking, you start talking about cutting three days off an animal stay, it's, it's pretty significant as far as what it's done uh, for cleaning and, and feeding them money and that type thing. Uh, over on the next page, you'll see in the red, research methods for additional parking spaces, uh, trying to see how we can convert, if, if feasible, uh, very limited area that we have at the shelter so that we can have more parking. Uh, and then other, the other red that you see there is housing for livestock. Um, we're gonna lose uh, in August where we've been housing a lot of our livestock. And uh, so we are uh, researching some ways there and uh, trying to look at existing property that the county might have and setting up something there that would be kind of temporary to where we can get uh, something, a place set up to where we can have an offsite location to house those. Um, down at the bottom in the green, it talks about again, the increased adoption hours. Uh, when this was done, we were averaging five animals leaving on Sundays through adoption or reclaim, so it's been successful. Uh, over on the next page, uh, in the yellow, in uh, February of this year is when we implemented our animal resource desk. Our surrender area changed to the animal resource desk. We're doing all of our intakes by appointment uh, so that we eliminate wait times outside so we're not having folks lined up sitting out there for two and three hours. 
Plus it also helps us to manage animals in the shelter. If I know going in that I'm gonna have, let's say 10 owner surrenders coming in, I know I've gotta have 10 cages, so it helps me to better manage, my staff to better manage, where are we gonna put those animals versus being reactive when they just show up without, without any more knowledge. Uh, next to last page, uh, got the, about middle ways, there's a green one there. Our adoption reclaim for 2017 was 89% for dogs which is up 3.3%. Our cats were up 4.1%. And overall, our adoptions were up 29% over 2016. Our goal uh, for this year is to try to increase our return to owner rates for our cats and kittens. Uh, we're looking to do that, uh, as you'll see in our budget, as far as when animals leave our shelter, uh, going ahead and having some type of identification on them with uh, accurate phone numbers so we can try to return animals home quicker. Uh, our transport programs, we had 681 animals transported last year just through our transfer program, transport programs. And in 2017, we had 1,378 animals that were pulled by rescue groups out of the shelter. So that being our roadmap, it kind of leads into uh, our budget. And you tell me, me where you would like to start on that. You have paper copies? I think it's on. It's on the, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can give you mine if you'd like to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just make a public statement. I mean, all of you are, have seen the progress that's been made here over the last several years, and it's really, really remarkable and outstanding, and I just want to publicly thank uh, Mr. Gregory for his leadership and, and really making a real difference in the lives of these animals and our families. I'd like to echo that. Uh, I had an incident here a few weeks back where a couple of dogs showed up on my property that my dog, who was as big as they were, or a little bigger, uh, said they didn't belong there. Uh, he told me that personally. Uh, and uh, they came out and, uh, and uh, secured the dogs. And uh, your personnel were very professional. And it's, it's been a total, I, I, I said in the news story, it's been a total community effort because it has. Uh, it's not just the folks within our department. Uh, it's you all helping us as far as making sure we have the resources. It's the community helping us as we've gone through these changes and understanding why we're doing this and, and then being able to see the results uh, has been significant. And I'll tell you what, if you have more commissioners that'll work for you, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> you, take, you just take care of that Rockville zone and we'll be fine. Thank you, Commissioner Reed. I know why Equivere versus Farm is, is, is no longer available. I was just listening to this year <laughs> <laughs> place for this livestock. Right up. I, I was just sitting here wondering, how much livestock do you have? It goes in spurts. I'm not going to tell you how many I have right now because I'll have three calls tomorrow. <laughs> but it does go in spurts. Um, we've had... Uh, I think we've had four to six at your house at one particular Donkeys moment. Donkeys and horses. Donkeys, and horses. That's what and I figured it's probably <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we did have an incident back in the fall uh, to where I think there was 13 horses. Thankfully, we were able to get somebody to help us with that so we didn't have to have a place to put those. Um, but it, it kind of comes in spurts. Right now, we're in a lull, let's, and let's keep it that way. So. I'd still be okay with the man at Mr. Burgess. <laughs> I really said we won't take any more. <laughs> uh, well, the finance, it's going to show the pl uh, pay plan raise in it from the salaries that uh, you have in your budget. This shows with the staff. Uh, Sonny and I have spoken several times as far as other stuff. I don't, I don't know what will come there. This does include the staff. So that's going to put some increase into it right there as well. Uh, Lisa, Mayor Burgess and Lisa and I met on the changes and I think that she will probably present, Lisa will think that, present those at the total budget meeting about what was the outcome mm -hmm. of the survey. I mean, I'm open to answer any questions that you have about it. So I guess we start down then. Uh, You want to give us just the highlights? Yeah, we have change the changes. I can. Do you want me to go through these first, or do you want me to go through the worksheet? Which is it? That's the revenue, and that's the uh, five-year budget. Well, I, that would be sim simplest to where okay. it comes from. All right. right. So, so what you have. Yeah, on the right. five-year five budget plan, um, all we're asking for this year is the things that we've asked for in the past to keep us on a one-year road, or every year purchasing a new truck and chassis. 
we got behind there for several years, so this is we're trying to do one a year, so to have us replacing the vehicle every 10 years. Um, and then for our laptop replacement, those are the only things for this year. Um, uh, excuse me, I have to back up. And the money that I was talking about to purchase the things for the large animal housing. Um, some of this is subject to change. Of course, you see out there washer dryer replacement. We were hoping to do that two years out, but some of that kind of went by the wayside this year. On, um, on revenue, it's basically relatively flat. Uh, we're looking at bringing in a little over half a million dollars through adoption and reclaim uh, fees and through the licensing fees. Uh, one thing on this, uh, the, the animal offender class, we didn't anticipate when we put that in the um, rules and regs a few years ago, that kind of take it off. We put down $780 for next year, thinking that we'd have approximately one participant uh, per class. Last class we had seven, so we've already done $1,300 this year. Um, we still have a couple months left. So that next year that may be uh, a low figure. So, so far this year, the city of Murfreesboro and uh, Smyrna have already approved. They've not. They've not already approved. I uh, don't foresee there being any issues. Every every um, place has been sent a request. Uh, we mm -hmm. kept Murfreesboro and Smyrna it's the same as last year. Uh, I know. I know they have received those because they reached out and asked a couple of questions. Seal of Laverne did not send us out any information. However, we did send them a packet. And uh, actually, one of the supervisors is up there tonight. They asked, they requested somebody to be there at 5:30 tonight, and I had a conflict, so she's going up there. Maybe a maybe a different face besides mine <laughs> will be more yeah. helpful this year. Okay. So, but she's there even as we speak. When was the last time a roof the roof was replaced on that building up there? Because we've had uh, trouble with that. It's not time. it's not been replaced. Well, it's just patched. We had a we had patchwork done back in July or August because it kind of it hit it, my my building uh, <coughs> maintenance took a pretty big hit. It was about fifty eight hundred dollars in repairs. Mm -hmm. As you'll see on that, um, uh, they told us with the, with those repairs we we're probably going to get about two more years. So you'll see in next year on the five year mm -hmm. plan, we put money in there because we're, we're there. We in the last about eighteen years and from when it started. So well, like they, we, we moved in, in. They moved in in 2014. That would get us 15 years. But we had remember was it 2011 when we had that hailstorm mm -hmm. come through? Yeah. We had wind damage to it at that point. 2004. Mm -hmm. 2004. Something. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, so going over to the budget worksheet, just to kind of hit some of the highlights. Uh, line 164 includes. Uh, of course, it includes the step increase, but it also includes a little bit of money to change those in-house positions that we talked about. Uh, they'll be called animal care technicians now, which includes in that job description um, the customer service aspect that the, pre that the current one does not. Mm -hmm. uh, line 169, that came down some. Uh, like I said, that includes a raise for the part-time staff. It's the addition also of a part-time bed assistant to help doc as we increase those numbers of surgeries. Uh, the reason for the decrease there is pulling that money out for that uh, part-time veterinarian. Um, next item uh, that's got a little bit of an increase is line 187, which is our overtime line. You know, this year we really got into a fix with the FMLA and had to amend that line quite a bit. Our supervisors also, back on July the 1st, they went from being salary to hourly. So that's to cover some of that overtime cost there. And then line 189 is an increase of that part-time vet uh, to the full-time vet. That figure that you see there are for, is for two full-time veterinarians. Um, line 205 had an increase, which is out of our control for the uh, medical insurance. here for highlights. Line 335, we asked for an increase there. We've got to have some repairs done to the parking lot. Uh, we'd like to, after after the 15 years, the duct work is, is really nasty. We need to come in and have those cleaned out. It's not like a, you know, at your house, you know, you've got 100 animals any given time. Those things are, are pretty nasty. And then we included money there to uh, have the floor wax, just to hire that out, um, to have that done. Here we 
everything else on the front page at the very bottom, line 413, we asked for an increase there due to having that second veterinarian being able to increase those surgeries just for uh, drugs and medical supplies. When's the all 10 contract up? That was uh, 2016, I believe, is when we did that out last. So it's five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. And yet, well, they're not having to do near as much as they used to. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. You're correct. So we'll have to, uh, I already have put a little bit of thought into what we would do uh, when it does come up. Mm -hmm. It may be something to where we look at uh, having paying them by a by the by the trip versus just overall. Mm -hmm. uh, line 499. We asked for an increase there. Uh, if you recall in the scorecard I talked about, that's really want to put a focus on returning animals back to their owner. Uh, that's the purchase of tag engraver and supplies so that every animal can go out with that tag that we spoke of. And um, line 790, the increase there uh, is for that large animal shelter and some fencing. Um, we're trying, like I said, we're trying to look for land that the county already owns or um, <coughs> actually have a, I reached out but I didn't get a reply. But there's actually some land near us that's owned by MTSU that would be, be great as far as location if they would allow us to use it because it's sitting vacant, vacant now. But those, those are the highlights off the budget. Mm -hmm. If you take that budget, that total figure, uh, based on our population right now, of, of uh, Rutherford County Works says our population is over 321,000, comes out to $6.13 a person. If you subtract out the revenue that we bring in, it takes it down to four fifty four per person. The average is anywhere from six to eight dollars per person for animal control services. So we're still in the very low end of that. Questions? Is that full time vet position competitive pay? I mean, relatively speaking, as far as public versus private. I think it's going to be difficult. They're they're in such high demand. Yeah, um, it's something to where if it's included in the mayor's recommendation, I would probably go ahead and talk to Sonia in May to start posting that. I think it's going to take some time. That's what I was getting at. Was if it gets approved, I mean, you're talking 90 days before you think you might find a candidate, or obviously you want it sooner. But when it came time to, when it came time to find the part time, yeah, that's what I was uh, trying to remember. We uh, the only folks that we had even interested were the folks that do the relief work, and they all wanted by the day again, not by yeah, the hour. hour. I think it's going to be difficult okay. uh, with the way. I mean, if you just look at the general labor market, we're having issues filling any of our positions, and then you right. start taking a position that's so specialized as that, um, and there's positions that in Middle Tennessee for veterinarians and vet techs that are open all the time. Mm -hmm. um, what was your total revenue that you brought in last year? It's always been in the, around that five, that five, five, five ten. ten to five fifteen range. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so what we're seeing basically is a mm -hmm. hundred and eighty. $2,000 increase over last year? Right. Uh, if we go based on amended, we're looking at 98. We go based off of original, yeah, 100 and, yeah, 100 something. <laughs> Other questions? If not, we'll entertain a motion. Yeah. Motion to approve this budget. Pass it on to the budget committee. Second. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Are there discussion? Favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Glad it's the last year. I'm going to have to look at the laptops for the budgets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just remind you, Michael, it took us more than a year, maybe two or more, before we got the first bid hire. That's what I was Yeah, no, I remember that. Any 
it wasn't too competitive then, was it? The heat and mass. And we've raised it since then, too. It's yeah. just a different kind of uh, You're pretty Garment. close to full yeah, employment, but, makes yeah. something hard to get. Hey, sir, you got his paper copies? Well, no, and uh, I think that's going to be a trend. Uh, talking to some of my counterpart here. Uh, but I do have my report, which I'll go over very, very quickly. Uh, and uh, I do have an amendment, and of course my budget. You, uh, you have my public safety uh, report in front of you. Uh, the past month has been uh, quite a bit of uh, training and uh, exercises that we go through. We, uh, we're preparing for a big exercise at Smyrna Airport coming up next month. Uh, we, uh, I did a presentation to the nursing school in, uh, at MTSU. We taught a radiological class in Smyrna. Uh, we uh, participated in the Smyrna's Preparathon, the drills on Friday, as well as the expo on Saturday. Uh, and we also taught a hazmat awareness class to, in Laverne just recently. Uh, coming up for us, uh, upcoming events, uh, the biggest one's going to be the Smyrna Airport exercise I discussed. That'll be on the, uh, the, uh, the 10th of May. And also we're teaching the 40-hour hazmat operations course in Laverne on May 14th through the 18th. That takes up quite a chunk of my staff to do because there's a lot of moving parts with it. Subject to your questions, that concludes my report. Questions? Make a motion to approve this report as presented. Second. And a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Budget amendment? The budget amendment is uh, we have what's called a sala, a side on wheels, which is basically a, a portable tower. It's on a, a, an old ambulance chassis. And uh, Mr. Gurley's familiar with this project. We've been trying to move it off of that onto a trailer. Well, we started making it happen, and the mass that's on it, which is a, a rather large mass that you crank up, uh, got some water down in it and got some freeze damage to it, and it's going to cost about $3,500 to get the parts and repair that mass. Now, we did look at buying a new mass, but that was going to run about $15,000 at least. So we figured fixing it for thirty five dollars was probably a better way to go. I need to move some, uh, since that was something I didn't anticipate, I'd like to move $3,500 from communications equipment because this year our communications equipment that we were looking at purchasing came in under what we anticipated and move that to maintenance and, re and repair of equipment for this purpose. Motion to approve the budget request as presented. Second. Other questions? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Okay, my budget, which I now know that on iPad is probably a, a large spreadsheet, it's hard to see without having to scroll back and forth. I'll do my best. The bottom line is, and uh, I like to use colors. If, if, you, if you get to the column with the color in it, the blue is just personnel costs that I have no, no uh, well, I do have some control, but, <laughs> but they're not gonna change. Red is any increase in my budget, and green is where I've managed to take that line down some. So knowing what y'all's job is, I'm probably gonna focus on the big red ones, okay? Uh, so uh, we have a, a, about a $470,000 increase to the budget this year. And that's contained really in three lines. And the first one being is maintenance agreements, which is line 334. Uh, every two years, as y'all might may or may not remember, our Motorola maintenance for all the tower sites and all the Motorola equipment at tower sites comes due. This is one of those years. And that's $226,992. The reason why we do it on a two year instead of every year is we get a small uh, break in the price between five and 10% for doing it on a two-year contract. So every other year, it bumps up my budget some. Uh, the other, the other, uh, the next one that uh, bumps it up quite a bit is actually, in the long term, is a good story. 
On 708 under communications equipment, I've got $200,000 added to that, and that's for the Eagleville Tower. As I've told you before, uh, we rent space off of a commercial tower to the tune of $2,000 a month to provide uh, emergency uh, communication service to that area of the county. With this, we'll be able to get rid of that altogether. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing a partnership with CUD and Middle Tennessee Electric who are going to be on that side. Basically, there's going to be a water tower there, and they bought five acres right there, and they told us we could put up a tower. And our part of it is putting the actual tower up. Uh, CUD is providing the road and the site and everything like that. Middle Tennessee Electric is, of course, going to run all the electrical and provide the electricity, and they're going to put this, the shelter, which is where all the communications equipment goes. Our part is, of course, the tower. Uh, we bud we're budgeting for uh, having to purchase a new tower, which is why it's $200,000. I, I may be a bit over op optimistic, but I think with some of the contacts we have, I might be able to, to get that down by trying to find a used 180 foot tower. But so far, we've not had any luck with that. So that's the big increase there. The third line that increases it is 718 motor vehicles. Uh, this is four of four, the last of my response vehicles that I'm replacing, so we won't be replacing any more uh, response vehicles after this next year for a few years. So like I said, those three lines by themselves make up, uh, what did I say, nearly $470,000 of the increase. Uh, and two of those are communications related, which means it's more than just supporting EMA, it supports fire, EMS, and the sheriff's office. So the, uh, the total department request is uh, $1,112,243. And unless you have questions about the other lines, but that, those are the heavy hitters right there. I'll make a motion to approve the budget and send it to budget Second. <clears throat> I would, I'd just like to make a, a couple of comments. Uh, nine years ago, the mayor asked me to start a study committee. Uh, that was 2009. I think I just retired from Sprint. We did. A couple of years later, we decided to get something moving. I actually came to work for Rutherford County. And uh, we actually built some infrastructure, a couple of towers and so on. but and replaced a, all, pretty much all the equipment. But as you know, the technology is constantly evolving. Um, I think at some point in time, uh, we're going to have to uh, look at probably to bring communications, emergency communications, up to the level it needs to be for all of the emergency services. We're going to need to look at doing what Murfreesboro has done, what Williamson County has done. Williamson County is spending a total of $22 million, uh, uh, I believe it is. Uh, Murfreesboro spent somewhere between 10 and $12 million. Uh, but we need to, to start re-looking at that. And I think it's going to be beyond what we can do in, in budget. It's going to be need to be done with a, a bond issue uh, because it's going to cost uh, 10 10 to 12 million dollars probably to to go the next step but I just want to lay the groundwork for that uh, uh, if we're going to stay current with technology and allow the, the ability to interop with with our surrounding uh, neighbors as we've seen the need for here just in the last 24 hours uh, with the incident that happened down the, on Murfreesboro Road near the county line so uh, uh, this is not the year, but I think we need to start looking at uh, at that once again. Um, for people like me that that's not as technically adept as Commissioner Gurley is, uh, what you're talking about is you're, you're analog right now, and everybody around you is going digital, and the needs of your public safety personnel on the ground is getting greater, and we're trying to shove more and more through the pipe. They don't just want to talk on the radio; they need 
pictures. They need other data shoved through. So the need is going to continue to grow. And uh, I've had some preliminary discussions with the sheriff, and, and it's something that we, in the next year, are going to come back and talk to you all about. But it, it's like Commissioner Gurley says, it's not going to be inexpensive. Technology never is. But it's needed, and you need it now. Uh, I know we did, he did a lot of great things to get us caught up, but it's we need to make the next step. But like I said, this ain't the year. Next, this it's a next year question. I'll have to agree with my commissioner down there exactly what he's talking about, and and this is coming on the scene because we're running across this continually out here, out here in our areas. Uh, the communications is tough. I'm glad to hear this tower at Eagle. Because if there's one thing I've heard for the last four years is the communications in the Eagle area out there, and hopefully that'll help there. But what you're talking about is you're totally right. It is we we've got to step up to the, the more modern day what we're doing. It, it reminds me of when you know I was in photography for a long time, and I'll never forget being in a press corps one time, and I'm sitting there shooting film, and everybody else is shooting digital, and you you sort of look like you know you're out of step totally there. The next week I was shooting digital and you have to do that if you're going to participate and be involved to know what's going on and uh, we're just well to be looking at that as a matter of fact uh, sooner way, than later and with Homeland Security grant monies uh, they of course they have parameters on what you can spend Homeland Security money on and we get a little bit every year uh, you're not even allowed to buy anything other than digital communications equipment now you're not allowed to buy analog that and that's federal money so that kind of tells you where it's all going I'd like to mention one thing about this year's budget, and that's it. $150,000 less than two years ago when the last time the uh, remote roll and stuff came up. Yes. And that. But you look on it, you'll see that. So the last year was down quite a bit because yes. of those type things. And we do have a tower in on this. This year, and we got a good deal on that tower. And like I said, I want to get away from paying twenty-four thousand dollars a year just to rent space on a commercial tower. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Further questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You turn uh, Miss Duke. Good evening. <clears throat> and no, um, I don't have paper copies. <laughs> I have one extra. Or I can put them back in my folder. Okay. <laughs> Just top a hundred thousand dollars off because it's hard to say, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's begin with our um, report. Um, so you're going to be reviewing the uh, activity reports for the month of, month of March. Um, Probably on that activity report, the only thing of interest is that we're still waiting on some checks from the surrounding counties. Sumner County's uh, amount is very high, but they do quite a bit of business with us, and uh, it is not unusual for them to have uh, uh, a month with that much uh, business, and we have no concerns that they're going to uh, pay that. Probably. Uh, Usually what happens is this meeting happen, uh, comes before the checks get to us. So This is for what you're showing here is the monies from... Uh, Out of county. And for detention what have come days. in right so far this month is uh, what you're saying? Right. Well, down at the bottom where it says, oh, those are the um, counties that owe from their last month's bill. So, so it was April. Um, yeah, we're, yeah, no, we're, February. we're, yes, February. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're not concerned about any of those counties being able to take okay. care of that in a timely manner. Um, our uh, STD stats, we still have a 3% plus positivity rate, but um, it has been worse. Um, so 3% is looking pretty good. 
And then on the facility programming, probably the most interesting thing as far as our programming is concerned is that our Title I uh, coordinator has uh, got a great relationship with MTSU and he's working with several of the uh, sports teams and some of the players are coming in on a monthly basis and talking to our young men about uh, making better choices in life and uh, the kids are really responding to that quite well. <clears throat> and then um, the last sheet is uh, who the charges that the kids are being uh, held on and released on and if you have any questions I'll happily answer them. about Sumner again because it seems okay. to me they were high last month not near 66,000 like 30 something right if you will if you will look um, on the detained on that rap sheet we had 10 Sumner County kids that we held this okay. last month okay. and so that adds up uh -huh. uh, and that's, that's 175 a day yes per child okay so in 10 days that's 1750 so it's how many um, days would be Sixty-six thousand and just seems a lot to me for that. For that, okay. But we'll we'll see it next month, right? All right. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. If there's no questions. We'll entertain a motion on the report. I move we approve the report. Second. Got a motion to second. Any further questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, and you should have um, our budget information. Um, it's probably easiest to go with the five-year capital budget plan. I only have one item on there. Uh, and if you thought that the um, washer and dryers at Paws were expensive, <laughs> <coughs> well, I have a quote. Um, and I thought I'd go ahead and put it on here because it is large. It is uh, two commercial grade uh, replacement washer and dryers. Um, they've got a 10 to 12 year lifespan on it and we're at year 10 now. We've already done some repair work to them so the estimate is uh, $40,000 for those. So that's just kind of a heads up about a uh, capital cost in the future. And then the uh, next thing we should probably talk about is our revenue estimate for the coming year. Um, you had asked uh, a couple departments earlier the, the difference in last year. We, um, our detention bed fees for last year were, uh, were around 500000 and we've, we've already surpassed that this year, so we're estimating next year to be uh, $634 and, or $634,000, <laughs> give or take. Um, we're hoping that this year we're going to uh, be able to contract again with DCS once some of our um, business with the county attorney's office uh, wraps <coughs> up, um, which we are not currently contracting with them, so that will increase our revenues. Uh, and then the Title I grant is uh, also in there. So <coughs> potentially we could um, be bringing in uh, a bit more than we did last year. Let me ask you one more about the washing grid. When you say two commercial grade replacement washers and dryers, two washers and two dryers or one washer and one dryer? No, dryers? it's one washer and one dryer. <coughs> and you lease them? No, we bought them. It was part of the, when we moved into the new facility, okay. they were uh, they were waiting on us. And like I said, those have a, a 10 to 12 year lifespan and we've already done um, some serious repairs on one of them and the other one is, is limping. Okay. Okay, on then to the worksheet. Um, you want to do highlights? Yes. Okay. 
Um, starting uh, on page one, the first real change uh, is going to be in uh, line item 115. There is a new position uh, requested in this line item. It is a compliance sergeant. Uh, making uh, in line with our other sergeants salaries and that is going to be to uh, just like all of our positions they're going to be multitasking but the you're going to hear a, a theme throughout this budget about how the newly uh, approved minimum standards for juvenile detention centers they've uh, finally uh, redone our minimum standards and there are uh, huge differences of what they expect now from facilities as to what they had in the past and we're going to need somebody to be able to help us keep up with that. It's not something that one person can do anymore. Who is uh, they? The Department of Children's Services, Department State of Tennessee. Tennessee. I'm sorry. So DCS um, has new minimum standards that are affecting everything that we do. So I'm asking for a compliance sergeant to uh, help do that. I can keep going or if you have more questions about that, I can I'll keep going. Okay, the next change uh, is going to be in line item 164. I'm asking for two additional full-time detention officers. Um, the amount of monitoring that we are required to do uh, has dramatically increased and having one um, the amount of the amount of eyes that we need and available bodies to do everything that needs to be done is going to have to increase um, so we are hoping that two detention officers is going to cover it there are some shifts that we have that uh, we'll not need an uh, additional person added, but we do have uh, a need to add in other areas. Um, we have had uh, many uh, applicants and new hires that have come from the adult facilities uh, that are shocked and amazed at how much information that all of my employees are required to know and how much uh, documentation they're required to uh, provide and what all they have to keep up with for the kids as uh, compared to the adult facilities. Um, it's not that we uh, you know have uh, to have special employees it's just so much extra that they're required to do so it and what what one person once was able to take care of, uh, now it's almost a one and a half. So um, we're crossing our fingers that two is going to take care of that for us. What is your ratio now on the attendance to children? Well, the state requires a one to eight during the day and one to 16 at night, but that's a minimum requirement. Uh, the minimum that we have uh, now isn't really uh, we do it for the shift okay we have so many posts throughout the facility on third shift we uh, don't uh, post somebody in intake we keep everybody that we have in our housing area and then on second shift we only post somebody in intake when there is activity going on in intake um, we have um, different pods where like our female pod we won't probably only ever need one employee there uh, in our male pods where we are full and we have uh, young men that have uh, let's call it behavior issues one person is not always enough when those pods are full of 16 kids the tools that we once had in our toolbox to manage this population uh, has changed and has been reduced based on these new minimum standards. Um, we are um, in a situation where we have to um, 
engage and, and spend so much time one-on-one -on -one with the young people who are actively disruptive that the, the other children um, need to still have the, their needs met as well. So we're spending so much time on our troubled youth are extremely troubled to youth that uh, we aren't able to get it all done. So you're at the minimum ratio? We are not at the minimum ratio, but we are at a point where we are unable to effectively manage the workload with the staff that we have. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, how much of the increase is due to accepting juveniles from other counties? Mm -hmm. In other words, what's the percentage of the uh, JDC's population that's Rutherford County versus outside counties? Are we really doing our, in other words, is it paying for, or is it paying for itself to accept juveniles from other counties and then some? Because, I mean, we, to my knowledge, we don't have to accept people. So That's can you correct. elaborate on that? That's correct. We are under no contract requirement to do anything except for the youth in Rutherford County. However, if I do minimum uh, ratios, there would have to be warm bodies in those posts, whether there was one child in there or whether there was 16. So the, the, the rate, what, what is hard for me to explain is we're meeting our minimum ratios, but what is required now to be done for each child and what we can no longer do that was once a, a, a management uh, tool or technique requires more than one person to do. So, and we've talked about this before, if, if we have one child in our uh, general population pod, if there's just one child in there, there has to be one. Uh, right. But I, I still didn't, I don't think, got an answer to what I, my original question, and that is what percentage of the JDC population is in county versus out of county? It's probably about 50 50. Continue. Keep going. All right. Um, the next. Line item of interest is going to be a 189. This is uh, Title I grant money, so this is going to be reimbursable at 100%. We are asking for um, two full time education assistants, um, which would be two new positions, but those positions would be covered with the grant money that uh, Title I is going to be affording us. Are you guaranteed that? Um, we're still working with uh, the mayor and the finance office and uh, Title I, and there's going to be some allocation changes, but depending upon uh, what those changes are, we're prepared to reduce the, the number of employees. Is this the one that came from the... The Board of Education? Yeah, right. It's now going through the Board of Education for this department. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see this in both budgets? Uh, no, right now it's in my budget. It just sort of funnels through BOE, um, but they've asked me to, at this point, keep it in, in our budget. Okay. So you're two VAs. Right, so, so it, it, over it, it, here on on our revenue, we've had, they've given us a guesstimate of what the grant money will be for
for Rutherford County, and then we incorporated the new positions based on that. How much did you take in this year? Are you getting in last Rutherford? year? Was a hundred and uh, approximately one hundred seventeen thousand. I'm talking total in your revenue. You got a. Uh, oh, this year. Um, I'm. Oh, you're estimating. Right. I, last year, or well, this current year, I, I think it's going to be around sixteen or six hundred and seventeen thousand. So you're anticipating. So you're anticipating about four hundred thousand. Right. More. In the event, if, if if the grant money comes in as projected, and if we pick up that DCS contract. <coughs> Um, Do you feel pretty good about those ifs? Uh, the grant money, they've, uh, those allocations have been moving. So, no, I don't know what the Title I money is going to end up. However, that entire process and the people involved, uh, I mean, those uh, positions, uh, those two full-time positions, if that money doesn't come through, then those positions just don't exist. Okay. Um, the contract... Um, they are waiting on a couple of court dates that are coming up, and I think once those court dates resolve, then that contract should be, uh, should not have any more stumbling blocks. And I can answer any other questions on page one. Um, but the next thing that would probably be of interest is on the second page. Okay, well, let me, maybe this is a Sonia question, but uh, the insurance that 16%, I remember, is part of what's going up for some, sometimes for medical insurance for the uh, active workers. But uh, I just see, uh, I saw the insurance where it went from. Well, 311 is what was budgeted this year, and 134,000 was spent at the end of to the end of December. So I know there was a slight increase this the year we're in now. There was an increase, but it wasn't that big. We've had um, open positions that we've had a hard time filling. I don't know okay. if that. Well, I don't know if that's insurance or what, but I'm saying you're counting on. What I'm saying is we've seen from uh, 16, 17, 252,000 is what was spent on employee insurance. And now we're asking for two in two years, 430,000. Are you getting a lot that are, well, the well, spouses uh, the, can't come in now. And, well, the. Um, I'm, I'm just asking where it came right, from. The, I, know, of, I know it's increased, but Some of the increases lot. will be, I'm asking, consider, remember that I'm asking for a full-time compliance sergeant, two full-time detention officers, and currently, until, until or unless the grant money allocation changes, an additional two full-time EAs. Mm -hmm. So that would increase, I mean, you have to budget in the insurance for if you get those positions. And, and right, so you have they're budgeting a worst case scenario on yeah. all of those current open positions plus yeah. the three new positions and it's they're using a big number uh, it's with the assumption that they would take the bank you make the assumption that they would want the family plan so you get the family plan right but if they come in and it's just for the employee only then we end up spending less but you make the assumption so you don't overdraw the line out mm -hmm. so anytime there's a vacancy or a new position you budgeted the highest insurance but you're hoping but you only need the one, so that's how you budget it. I would like to see, between now and next year, I'd like to see an analysis of, are we, is it costing Rutherford County to house out of county juvenile delinquents? And if so, I mean, and all, at what point? I, it, it would make sense that at some point, based on what you said, that at some point, to a certain point, it's not really costing us a lot because we've got to man it to a certain level anyway. But then what I don't want to get us into is where we're expanding 
uh, personnel and expanding services and so on beyond what uh, that point or that break even point. So I, I'm not asking for it now, but sometime between now and next budget year, whether it's me or whether it's someone else sitting here, I'd like to see a, an analysis of where that break even point is or where, whether there is a break even point or not. What would help our department more than anything is if there were local mental health beds available. We've spent a month at the ER not in a not in a room I at the think hospital. That's true for the adult as right, well as I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. We we spend more time with yeah. our staff members farmed out, babysitting mentally yeah. ill, you know. I don't disagree young there. people. And and hopefully maybe some more of those are coming. I don't right. know. <clears throat> All right. Page Second two. Page. Okay. Um, the only uh, new or unusual item on page two is going to be line item 399 and we have included uh, some monies in this line item for some mental health services. We are required now by the uh, minimum standards to require uh, to offer mental health services to some degree for the young people that are in detention and I am currently in talks with the local guidance center. I don't know if that's going to pan out or not. So my the number that I have, have plugged in is sort of arbitrary at this point. But we know that we're going to have some expense. Uh, we don't know how much it's going to be. So I basically just rounded that number in 399 uh, to 100. Uh, even and I'm hoping that we won't need that much but if we do then we will have some money available to provide those re required services. When a county calls you for a child to keep, I suppose that's how it works, right. are you allowed by law to ask if they are a mental situation or not? Yes. We ask all those questions. And Are you allowed uh, to refuse them if they're a mental case? We can refuse uh, somebody that's wanting a bed for any reason. Um, I can tell you the young man that we spent a month at the ER with was a Rutherford County child. Um, usually what we do uh, in situations like that, if we have out of county youth that come in that are problematic, we call the county and say, hey, you know what, we gave it a go, but you're going to have to come get him. When do the new standards? Uh, they took effect begin? June, mid June, I believe. If you can't find someone to help with those mental health services, what do you do? Well, simply just right now, what we're doing is we're documenting all of our efforts, that all of our failed efforts, in hopes that um, just documenting, saying that we're trying, we're trying. Uh, will be enough. And then the last thing is uh, line item 790, and this is uh, our commander module that that opens every door, does every video, is is also dying. We've had it for 10 years. We have replaced motherboards in it. We're replacing cameras regularly. The um, we're trying to be proactive with this uh, and go ahead at one time, uh, take care of it, switch it over to digital. When we opened the facility in 2008, we had the um, one of the options that the uh, system provided was that it would record audio for three weeks, which would have been fabulous in some situations that we have had recently uh, when uh, the system began uh, dying in a piecemeal form. We've lost that ability to record audio. So not only would it allow us to go digital and to replace uh, our, our dying equipment with uh, something better, we would 
would regain the option to have that audio recording back. You know what? Why you're being asked so many questions? Because all we have to do is look at the bottom line. Oh, I know. I know, you see, and it's 530,000 more than last year. It's 845,000 more than 16, 17. So that's probably 60% more than it was back then. Well, I, I understand, uh, and, and I appreciate that, that y'all do what you do, um, but I would be remiss if I didn't bring mm -hmm. to okay. the table the issues that the department has. Mm -hmm. But uh, and that's why the questions are coming from out of county people. Mm -hmm. They're 50-50 if we don't need to increase these people that are coming in to, to meet the state requirements. But, well, we basically, they put us in the position we've got one, one way we can mm -hmm. uh, increase our revenues, and that's the property tax. That's it. That's nothing else that we can do to get it down here and make sure of that. And, uh, well, we've got lots of uh, people wanting lots all over. Yes, sir. You know, that we do. So I know you understand because you've been up here a long time. We've gone through it before. And, and it's, not getting, it's not getting any easier as time goes along. No, it isn't. But uh, I just wondered hey, you want to bring that up. I'm sure you've got you've got all those needs and the requirements. But that uh, uh, digital video recorder there is $140,000 and well, $790,000. Um, let's see. I think. digital surveillance system is probably a good thing because yeah. it's going to probably decrease our liability, allow us to right. uh, maintain records uh, a lot more, the storage capability of what was went in 10 years ago when the uh, JDC opened is totally different technology than what's available now. It, to me, if the due diligence was done in procuring the right system, uh, a lot of that would be monitorable from an iPad or something. Another, uh, uh, as you, uh, that an officer could uh, walk around with, mm -hmm. and uh, not necessarily in a fixed location. Uh, no, that in uh, that entire price is the upgrade. Mm -hmm. So I can see a need for that. I mean, uh, we can see needs a lot of times. We just right. It's yeah, a uh, question last is one about what, uh, the ambulance uh, service is what yeah. I get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we help. We're going, and we're always going to have needs. And part of ours is to we we need to work with them, and we got to find out what's needed right now. How was the 175 set? Um, that, uh, it was um, at the time 175 was the highest rate being paid throughout uh, for any detention facility. Um, so it. it in the beginning, we just said, okay, it'll be, we actually did it different for boys and girls. In the beginning, it was 100 for boys and 125 for girls. And then over the years, it has crept up, and then we just at 175 at this point. I think there is one other facility that has uh, um, charges around 200, but then they provide some transportation. Uh, services that we do not provide. And it might, like I said, depending on where all this plays out, it might be good that we discourage if we can't make, in other words, if we can't break even on having uh, a county send someone here, then we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, uh, it you know, that's kind of my way of thinking. I mean, I want to help out other people as much as possible, and I realize that not every county can afford to have a, a juvenile detention facility, but still, we've got uh, the taxpayers of Rutherford County don't need to be paying for that. Mm -hmm. So we really need to keep on it if it's 200 or two and a quarter or whatever it takes to break even. So. 
this budget, just like all the rest of them, will have to have one more review mm -hmm. before they go to budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, <laughs> I'm finding it hard to go with everything. Oh, well, I understand. It. That's just it. But, are there any, well, we've got seven of us here. Any further questions? Not. If there's no more questions, someone let me make a recommendation. Let me ask one more question. You're, you're talking about the, the digital video. Was were, was there more than one system looked at? No, the commander system is the system that when the the buildings were uh, originally built, both a juvenile detention center and the correctional workhouse. That was the system that was used in both. And the system is is not just um, recording different areas of the building. It's also connected to opening and closing and locking the doors. So it's, all, it's already working with these other? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's also on state bid. Try and find out where I can touch. Yeah. <laughs> Back to your children and your attendance, what ratio are you aiming to accomplish? You're talking about like one to six, mm -hmm. one to, to, to eight, or whatever. We obviously have to meet the the minimum standards I we we're currently having <clears throat> this is uh, I talked a little bit to the to the sheriff's department about this earlier the amount of potential uh, new hire employees are in one big pot in the NeoGov system, which is where we go and look through applications and resumes of people who are interested to work for Rutherford County. And so if there's a correction officer position at the jail, correction officer position at the workhouse, correction officer position at juvenile detention, once they go through and sit through the interviews and see what they're uh, looking at as far as what's required of them daily at all three, we're getting the short end of the stick because there's so much more that we have to do and our responsibilities and liabilities with the kids so much more than they are with the adults. So I'm having a hard time keeping a full staff as it is. Uh, now that I have, now that there are these new uh, minimum standards, I've had people come to me and say, I'm leaving because it is no longer safe for an for employee to work here. They've taken our tools away from us. Um, so right now, what we have to do is say, please stop fighting each other. Don't hit him anymore. I'm going to tell you one more time, please break up this fight, and then at this point, we can go through our use of force and get to uh, our OC spray. But OC spray will, make, will probably not be available for juvenile detention centers much longer. So I'm having uh, management issues with the population, not because we're unable to do it, but because the state has narrowed what we're able to do and the, the tools that we have to use. And so where I used to have uh, one person who could very easily manage 16 kids on a pod, even when they're um, aggressive, now sometimes it takes two. I've got to have one that's one that's one on one with the kid who's trying to, you know, do whatever. And I have somebody else who's running those 15 minute checks and putting in 400 uh, reports on each child every day. So the, the management is the issue. It's not that um, you know one person can't get it all done, but if you want it to be orderly and you want it to be well managed, it's going to take more than that minimum now. And you can't put them in solitary. Well, there ever was such a thing as solitary. 
solitary, you know, you're getting all your food and your snacks and your phone calls and your recreation and your visitation and, and all that. That some some people think that's solitary and some people don't. If you could put them in solitary, you could no, solve but we don't. So and we never did. I was looking at the employee numbers there and where she's having to add these numbers and whatever. When it comes to the situation of the safety of our employees, and we've got these requirements being thrown at us that we have to have these individuals, I don't see how we can refuse those numbers. Uh, that might make it all more important to look at whether we take in uh, kids from other uh, jurisdictions or not. Because uh, if, if you know, because you're telling me one thing and then you're telling me something else, we need to reduce the. If we keep staffing level the same and we reduce the people we're taking in from other jurisdictions, then we're going to increase the staff to delinquent ratio. I, I hope that's not what you've heard. What I, what I can tell you is one child, one single solitary child with the right combination of issues can, can, call, can wreak havoc if you want to have an orderly, well-maintained facility. What I think what Mr. Schaefer is getting in, I brought across here a while ago is we looked at these numbers and whatever and how we do that and, and Commissioner Garley too. Uh, what we're concerned about is, is sort of like, you know, we're, uh, we're going out here buying watermelons for $2 and selling them for a dollar and we're saying, hey, we need a bigger truck. Uh, that, that seems to be our problem here. And uh, if, if that's the situation, forget the truck. We just don't need any more watermelons. And, and the thing is, is what we've got to look at right here. I mean, if, if it's that we keep adding and adding more of the juveniles in here. You just have to make sure that that one watermelon in the bottom isn't rotten and attracting the flies that. and the maggots and, and, and corrupting the entire load. I understand that, but I mean, what, what we're looking at here is dollars and cents, and that, that's what we have to look at and what we're trying to do here. We, we go through this all the time as a state, and that's the unfunded mandates. We just get, mm -hmm. They just flow on downhill yeah. all the time because they come up D with great ideas <coughs> and they don't have any funding for them. And DCS is not doing very well in their no. own facilities. Exactly. Right. I, I, I feel, I feel um, bad for, for victims of youthful offenders because they expect a certain level of uh, that public safety will provide for them to keep their community safe and the the turnaround on some of these kids is is, is not what they expect it's not like it was 40 years ago no, it's not. Was young ones. No. they're 12 years old and they act like 20 year olds used to mm -hmm. People, we need some kind of decision to do. Well, I'll make a motion to move this on to the budget committee. There's no recommendation or? No, yeah, we recommend it. Uh, no it's at presented. I got a question when we're after we're done with the discussion part. Do we have a second? Motion dies for a lack of a second. Why don't we just accept uh, and recognize that she's made this request and uh, request an additional review, which is going to happen without you doing it, yeah. by the mayor before it goes to budget to address any number of these concerns and questions that you've had to see if we can gather further detailed information prior to it going to budget. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I, did. I just had one question, Mr. Duke, on the, on the full time EAs. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I had to word this the right way. It, is that a want or a need? And I know every, I, you know where I'm coming from with that. I don't mean that disrespectful. Right. Just, um, we the part of the new minimum standards is that um, more is required for the young people's educational needs while they're being detained. Um, so there is a need for, um, the need is there. However, we knew coming uh, to this point that if the allocation changes, then that request changes. Um, so the whatever the final allocation for that Title I grant money mm -hmm. is, it as it if and when it reduces, then the so those pieces. positions will be pulled out. Okay. By I mean it goes back to what the chairman was saying. You're you're doing this, but we're about to hit Mr. Cope and the sheriff with the same questions. I'm sure anyway. Yeah. I, we're kind of priming the pump, I guess, for the same thing's going to happen over the next hour. But. Thanks, Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> but you do a great job, Ms. Duke. I, it's tough to sit in your seat, yeah. and I certainly appreciate your hard work for that. I know it's you've always got to maintain good composure in front of us when you probably want to wring our neck half the time, and I get that. Um, but I also know that you understand our position. Yes, sir. Thank you. Scott. Okay. The mayor's recommendation to move it to or let the mayor review and then answer some of our questions. We got a motion, we have a second. I'll second. second. Okay. Make a motion. I'll make it. There you go. I thought you did. Oh, that's Mr. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he did or if he was saying that. But also it's awful hard to be public safety officer in this day and age too. Yes, You've been hit from every side. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that happens down there, it's your people's fault. Yes, sir. Let yes. me see you thing. point out one thing that makes all of this very, very evident, what she's telling you. Every month I go over to the HR department and just have a conversation with all the new employees. There were about 12 people there this past Thursday. Eight of them were hers. Mm -hmm. This is This is not just a happening one time, it's every month. Her turnover is amazingly difficult. Got a motion a second if there's no further questions. All, right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Have a good evening. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Hello. I got three items to uh, talk about tonight. Uh, one being our reports, another a uh, request for permission for a to apply for a grant, and then obviously the budget. I'll go ahead and start with our report. I think since the, the last time that we met, uh, we had just passed our American Correctional Association uh, mm -hmm. audit with 100%. Just to let you know that uh, two weeks ago, we passed our Tennessee Corrections Institute audit and inspection with 100% also. So uh, we had our board meeting on April 2nd, and a lot of what we discussed was, in fact, the budget. Uh, the next report is going to be the yearly activity report. There's no significant changes there. Uh, the uh, work center re release, uh, work release program would be the next one. No significant changes. That's still going great. Our monthly worker report showing a uh, projected savings of $104,600 or $104,000. $1,632 for the past month with the work that we provided for the county. Uh, next is the state litter pickup for April, and that is all on our reports. Not a whole lot of difference between 
last time we reported it now. State letter pickup, who manages that? The, the who is it, Jason? Uh, who picks it up? We, we pick it up. We pick it up, yeah. but uh, who manages it? The state? What state department? Yeah. Is, does it work T out of your T office? No, no, no. Street it's Department of Transportation, yeah. Okay. So you have nothing to do with it? No, no, we just, just, we just provide the inmates for it. Make sure that they're answering to the question. We have, we have a van that we drive the van and use their inmates to pick this up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the state. For the state. Because the state I know we have county. They, the state tells us which roads we're to pick up and they have a fixed amount of money, fixed amount of miles mm -hmm. and we can, when we spend their money, that's, that's over with, but we do the work for them. So the state decides which roads. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You uh, have nothing to do with that. But yeah. the city limits, the cities are responsible for it, right? Mm -hmm. They get the people. Correct. from Yes. Awesome. Yeah, there's a there's a big sometimes a misconception about who picks mm -hmm. up what yeah. Yeah, uh, throughout the county because we get a lot of calls throughout the week mm -hmm. that may be uh, you know th that may be the responsibility of of uh, solid waste and yeah. you know we'll have to tell them no that's mm -hmm. solid waste yes they use our inmates to pick it up but that's not uh, us that goes out to a particular road so uh, and there are several different which is a good question uh, the fact that who manages that there are several different uh, litter pickups and, and things that we're doing throughout the county that are done by different people so but that particular one yes the the state manages. What I was trying to accomplish is to get you to say you did not choose the roads that were picked. I do not choose the roads <laughs> that were picked. Right. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get you to say. Because we have a lot of people that think you do. Yes, and, and we know because we get those calls. Yeah. We put. I, I didn't <laughs> yep. Are there questions on the report? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve this report as presented. Second that. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the next is uh, we'd like to request permission to apply for a Second Chance Act grant. And that's a no no match grant. And it's, uh, there are more than six of them throughout the nation for $750,000. Um, if awarded, we'll be working in partnership with the behavioral, volunteer behavioral health of the guidance center, which we've done for, uh, I've been working with them ever since I was with the sheriff's office years ago. So, um, to provide services that address needs of incarcerated parents. Um, and that's a big, um, I guess a, 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 a big need that we have in our county uh, just for the simple fact that uh, about 80 percent of incarcerated parents have children who will also come through the system at some point um, there have been times when um, i've worked in facilities where we had grandfather father and grandson all within the same facility so it's a it's a huge need and um, I, I know how uh, intervening with uh, with a child and uh, uh, that type of, of counseling can, can help uh, in the long run uh, with uh, raising my, my first son since he was four months old, uh, who's had uh, no, he had, his biologic father was not in his life. Um, now he's now 20 and in, and in MTSU. So, and we just, uh, just uh, two years ago adopted a, a newborn whose father was in and out of the system. So, um, intervening in a young one's life makes a big difference and if we can do that while they're incarcerated and tie those bind or bind those ties a little bit uh, more than you know hopefully we can do some better work with that and that's some of the things that we've already worked with a lot with parenting programs and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and uh, MRT and some of those things so we just like to be able to apply for that and and hopefully we can get it uh, mostly what uh, what it boils down to is uh, just having the facilities to do it. Like I said, it's a no match grant and uh, we have the facilities and we have that uh, population, so. Any 
You need a motion for that? Yeah. I'll make a motion to allow Correctional Work Center to apply for the grant as proposed. Second. We have a motion. A second. Further questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a long way to go to get to the budget. And yes, I am crazy for having a 20 year gap in my two children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know you were thinking about I looked at you said two, and I was like, what? Yeah. Um, it, of course, budget, I can go down the, uh, the highlights and yeah. low lights, if you will, and, uh, and answering questions that you all may have. Uh, we'll get started with um, line item 110. What we'd like to do is upgrade our work release sergeant, who is Sergeant Peralta. Um, most of you all have, have heard that name because he's doing all that work with, uh, he, he started the program and, uh, and he's been doing excellent work ever since, uh, since we've been uh, opening that program up and what we'd like to do is uh, promote him to lieutenant uh, and just make, uh, make him comparable on the low side of what uh, is, is uh, normal in our state and uh, in that position. That will give you two lieutenants? That will give us one lieutenant who is over the, uh, over the, the shifts and then one uh, that would be an administrative lieutenant. Which is the, usually that position in uh, our size facility is, is higher than a lieutenant, but um, you know, I'll try to go in this easy. Uh, next one would be 115, and that's up upgrade our administrative assistant who's been taking care of the programs for the past few years uh, to the level of sergeant. She is our program coordinator and public information officer, and uh, both of these employees are right at 20-year employees, and uh, you know, they're very dedicated to what they do. And, and you, you had, Commissioner, you had asked earlier uh, a want or a need, and I think in this uh, this case it's more of, of, of a deserve. Mm -hmm. well, 20 years, the only way to get a raise is, is if the table is raised. And if there is no table, there's no raise. There's no raise. Uh, next one would be 196, uh, the in-service uh, travel. We're um, decreasing that by $5,000. We're traveling a lot less now. Um, I don't even have a take-home vehicle for that matter, so um, we're doing a whole lot less of, of, of the travel. We're trying to do most of our training in-house. Um, and then, you know, occasionally we do have to send someone out of, out of town, but we're, we're doing a lot of the training, not only for us, but for the surrounding counties, too. Uh, 307. Communication. Uh, we're looking at a $500 increase, and that's just on the cell service for all of our staff and the iPads for the sanctions visitation. Uh, 312, you'll notice that uh, that's going to zero. Anything that's under that 312 uh, and that OJP 14 and 16, that's all the grant that will be ending in October 1st. So that's the reason you'll see a decrease there. Uh, 320, a decrease of $15,000 because we won't need to be paying that ACA accreditation for another three years. So there's a decrease. Uh, 335, we're going to try to, we'd like to increase that building maintenance, which includes our chillers, our water heaters, roof repairs, all of those type of things. We'd like to increase that by $9,000. 336, which is equipment, kind of on the same lines. Um, that's the equipment such as our, our uh, anything from our laundry services to our food service or any equipment that we may need to use. Uh, that's all the, still the same original equipment that was put in that building in 2008. So we'd like to increase that uh, $8,000. 348. You'll see $150 less due to a new contract agreement with our commissary vendor, and we negotiated that they would take care of uh, some of that uh, 
uh, postal charges for the inmates. 355, it also goes along with that grant that ends in October 1st, so you'll see those zeroed out there. Three, three, or 399, $15,000 increase in our contracted services. Um, if you'll see, that, that includes everything from Summit to Dr. Rudd, Universe, Max Shred, uh, Pest Control, our, our partnership with Doors of Hope, our uh, uh, security and uh, fire safety. Uh, so there's a lot that a uh, lot in that line. Let's see, four ten, uh, five thousand dollars increase in custodial supplies, cleaning supplies for our facility. Four four one, prisoner clothing a five thousand dollar decrease. Uh, one reason that we've decreased in that we've we've filled our stock full on prisoner clothing, and uh, we're finding better ways of maintaining that clothing to make sure that it uh, lasts longer. Uh, one of those ways is, is buying better material. So um, the five thousand dollar decrease there, four fifty one, two thousand dollar decrease, uh, and that's uh, uh, uniforms for staff, and uh, that decrease is due to a less of a turnover that we have right now and the, the uniforms are being maintained better. And uh, the only, let's see, no, we're not to that yet. I don't want to surprise you yet. Uh, utilities, we're looking at a $10,000 increase due to, we were running short. Uh, this past time, we'll, we'll probably uh, be able to make it uh, through the next couple months, but uh, with more people in sanctions now, uh, we used to not use that end of the building. Now there's uh, utilities for it. We're doing a lot more programs after hours, so we'd like to ask for 10,000 more in uh, utilities. Now you'll see a $5,000 decrease in 499. And that's other supplies and materials. Again, that goes back to the negotiation that we have with the uh, new vendor. Uh, and we have uh, negotiated that they pay for this, the indigent kit supplies uh, for the people that are coming in who can't uh, afford to pay for them. And now the biggie. And that's at 709, uh, updating our security system. And that uh, it was kind of along the lines of what Lynn was talking about in, when that building was built in 2000 or opened in 2008. We were already two years behind in technology. Commissioner Gurley, you talked a little bit about technology earlier. When we when we opened that building in 2008, we were already two years behind. Um, we have gotten to the point where uh, we can't keep patching the hardware because they don't make it anymore. And uh, we sat down uh, with the Stanley Security Systems and they said that, you know, we're one incident away from losing all of our controls in the building. Um, we've done all that we could to, to maintain it over the years, but, uh, you know, uh, it's an ever-evolving uh, ever evolving system uh, that controls all of our, and maybe I can help you to understand a little bit more. Um, by what Lynn was talking about, that controls all your doors, that controls your camera system, that controls your visitation, uh, that's, that commander, as she would call it, uh, that's your whole building. Everything is controlled by that. Um, and all it takes is one of those failing and you lose, you lose control of your building. So um, what we're asking for is a complete upgrade and we um, are not going, we're going to keep our analog and uh, because it seems to be working for us. I can't speak for anybody else, but it works okay for us. And that complete system upgrade is going to be uh, $110,000. And that is, like I said, on the state contract. So no new employees, no new vehicles. But you decreased 1.7% increase. So you've decreased in other areas right. that, so you're looking at about what a 72,000 difference. Yes, sir. Last time. And uh, and that's because we knew that we had this coming. We've had it coming for years now. 
uh, with this, this system. Um, so in order to pay for it, uh, you know, we know we have to balance that budget. Is that new monitoring system the same as what Ms. Duke was asking for? Is that what you said? It's going to be, it, I don't know what her specifics are, but it is the same company that uh, does it. I didn't know if there was a, some sort of purchasing agreement where we could get a discount if there was a set. I think we talked yeah. about, I think, I think we might have talked about I don't think that, it would hurt to ask. This, this is already, I think, on state contract. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's, all, so it's already been bid. It's already been bid out then. Okay. We, we may be looking at three or two. Well, that's what I was looking at the sheriff's <laughs> evening. Give yeah, me a yeah, wink or something. Have a standing yeah. system. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a whole different. That's a whole different animal. Okay. Yeah. Animal. yeah. yeah. It's a few years older. They anticipated it would last less than a year. Is what Stanley yeah. told us. Before really? It's gone. And it just. They've collected yeah. all no the parts. They, they're, yeah. they're getting parts from China just to. Patch it in. They, I think they have and they bought some parts. They bought, we, they bought parts off of, you know, from eBay, eBay. to, to uh, patch and it. And that's yeah. kind of the way the radio system was a few years back. Uh, it, it, you had to go to eBay to find parts and stuff like that. I mean, nobody makes it. Mm -hmm. Do you have trouble with uh, turnover? Um, we go through spells, uh, and I, that's just corrections as a whole. You know, I've, I've been doing this. 20 plus years in four different facilities and I've seen a lot of, you know, some people are not meant to do this job for a living. Um, and then you put restrictions on such as uh, Juvenile has and it makes it even harder. Um, but our our turnover is not that bad right now. As a, as a whole, I think in corrections, it's about 75%. Uh, of course, ours is considerably lower than that, but uh, it's, a, it's a hard position to fill. It really is. Are there questions for the superintendent? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I'm going to make a motion that we approve this with a recommendation to the budget for approval. Second. Okay. Motion, and we have a second. Commissioner Taylor, Senator. All in favor? Any further questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Well, I'm going to do we got to I can't read that. You got to put a spread down there. You never get We'll do. We're going to do amendments first, and then then we'll get into the budget. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. So we got. Anything going worse? You have a budget amendment. Okay. Let's go. Who's making? On this, if y'all would, if you would remove this and just turn it over, and it will be part of it, but it might be confusing looking at it right now when we start the budget. Anyway. Okay. The amendment, I never thought I'd see this in probably the two or three years, five years, or whenever. I'm asking to buy a body scan that I did not think that we were going to get. I meant to make a little copy of what this looks like, but if y'all would pass it around. It's a full scan, low dose body scan. If a piece of plastic this big can be detected. Okay? But it costs. Uh, I would like to ask y'all to consider increasing my 790, $134,000. And this will come out of our food supplies because we have done well with the contracting of our food. So it's within our budget. We're still actively looking for grants, by the way. And we'll take the workhouse, or all of us will take as many as we can get. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I never thought that I'd see uh, 422, that you'd be taking money from 
from the yeah, to something well, else. You know, <laughs> I really wouldn't do it. This is probably the only opportunity we may have to get something like this mm -hmm. other than a government agency giving it yeah. to us. Yeah. We've been looking probably about 14, 15 months, months. now. Uh, <clears throat> we've had Reba looking through grants after grants after grants. Uh, we looked at surplus uh, through government surplus, and we've not been able to come up with anything like this. When we first started with this, the first price we got on it was over two hundred thousand dollars for the piece of equipment. So we kept looking, uh, and now have found uh, what we need that will do what we need to do uh, for this price. And I guess kind of give you a background of, of what we got. This uh, report here is the incidents in our detention facility where there's things being brought in. Um, one of the things that we've got is I've had two incidents <clears throat> within the last six months where two of our in, uh, detention officers have ended up at the hospital uh, because of doing searches. Uh, one of them was stuck with a needle uh, that was uh, in a body cavity of a female. And um, she ended up in the hospital. Uh, there is a suspect of a possible hep C, so here is something that could carry on for life. Um, we had another incident uh, where uh, fentanyl uh, was brought into the facility by a person that was being booked. Um, and merely uh, by some of this dropping and getting into the air before we were able to detect it, uh, we ended up with one of our uh, female detention officers uh, going to the medical center being treated for this. Uh, these people that are on drugs will, will develop some tolerance level for fentanyl, but if you're exposed to it first time, it can be uh, deadly. deadly or uh, it will affect you quicker than it would them. Uh, anytime we take an inmate out of our facility, uh, we have a potential for something being brought back into the facility. Uh, of course, there's a question, well, why don't you strip search everybody? Well, because of constitutional law, we're not allowed unless we have some probable cause uh, to do this, whereas a body scanner uh, that will detect clear plastic uh, with powder in it or anything in your body cavity or anything will show up as a shadow, which will give us probable cause then. Uh, to conduct a search, but we're not doing a blind search because we have a little more information than just doing a blind search and hoping that uh, you don't get stuck or something. Um, one of the other problems we've got is weekenders coming in. Uh, they know they're just coming in for a weekend. They know if they bring something into the facility and get it past us, they can sell this uh, to the other inmates. Uh, we had a, an incident where uh, and they brought something in. Uh, they were not in on drug charges. Uh, they were serving weekenders for something else. So there was no probable cause to search this individual. Uh, but in the body cavity, they did bring some uh, drugs in. And there were six inmates then that, uh, because of this, uh, had a problem. Of course, then we have to treat all six of them. Uh, to needless to say, uh, on our medical side, then, of course, this is costing us because we're having to treat medically uh, when this uh, type of thing comes in. There's been some incidents in the uh, north where there was seven inmates uh, that died uh, in a prison facility or in a uh, detention facility because of fentanyl that got into the facility. And it was spread in among the pod and there were seven deaths uh, from this. So um, unfortunately, it's the age that we're living in. Uh, I hate to even think that we have to have something like this, but it's, it's a dual purpose. One, to keep these things out of our facility, but two, it's getting to the point where we're having to protect our personnel. What we're asking for, we can do this completely within our budget. We're not coming to you to ask for money from some other source. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why that uh, uh, we're able to do this is because we were able to, on contract now, on our food services, we've been able to be very successful in, in what we were hoping to do by, by uh, putting this out for bid. And, and it's saving us some money, uh, so it will allow us, if it's uh, approved, to be able to do this within our own budget. How long will it take you to get this? Um, Going through the purchasing, purchasing right yeah. now because we're trying to use uh, Virginia 
has gone to this body scanner. Mm -hmm. Miss Brink is checking, checking this out for, for everything. So it could be in the next couple of months yeah. if, if the contract and the bid process is correct. Where, where will you put it out there? It, uh, in uh, booking, there's a sale block 130. We would put it in there, mm -hmm. and then uh, we would bring those that are being booked in addition to anybody that goes out of our facility coming back into our facility. Mm -hmm. We'll go through this, but it will be in one. All visitors, we go through it. Not visitors. Sure. This will be inmates only that are coming you in. You won't facility. get a chance. Well, uh, we can show you <laughs> <laughs> if we get it. I mean, we still have sure, to purchase sure. it. But this, this will be strictly anybody coming into the for uh, being incarcerated. Okay. Would this replace the, uh, I guess, the metal detector that you have out there now? You no, keep using we're going to keep using that also. Um, so then somebody coming in, if they visit, do they, do they get in visit in person or something? Or we do something? video visitation now. Uh, uh, there there are that. some exceptions, face-to-face uh, -face visitation, but uh, the, if, if so, then they would be scared to, yeah. to keep anything from coming in our facility. Somebody coming in to teach something? That's be also Okay. okay. I mean, you hate to say this, but yeah. uh, you, you, don't know. you have to secure we live? from all of them all because you, you just don't know. We heard the request, and it's late in the year, and it's within the budget. I move we approve the budget item. Second to Motion and a second. Further questions? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Thank you. The next on the agenda is the report. Mm -hmm. Is there any items that are out of whack? No. no. Not yet. Not, yet. <laughs> Not till July 1st, right? Uh, <laughs> June 30th. motion to approve the request or the report as presented. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I guess you got to talk about the blind yes, vendors. Well, if it's an addendum to our current contract with the blind vendors, mm -hmm. we're going to be adding revenue through our uh, Inmate video visitation or remote visitation, actually. A mailroom support system where we're digitizing our emails and email and text messaging that is provided on their kiosks or their pads where we'll get a percentage. So we're setting up our percentages. So we'll work our telephone uh, commissions. Basically, this is just like the machine, the vending machines, and yes. such yes. things. Yes. This is something that's provided under TCA with blind vendors. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. It is. Okay, do we have a motion on the amendment? Make a motion to approve. Second. I got a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do uh, on budget is I'd like to present a summary on the 
5410 and then after I present the summary, y'all look through what you're going to have is the summary. Then you're going to have what I put together. The red is going to be decreases on that third page. And the black, of course, will be increases. And then we have, uh, I say, Lisa Nolan uh, papers, you know, the finance paperwork work at the very end of the sheriff's side of this budget. But our requesting budget for this year is going to be, I've included a $946,000 increase. This will, if accepted, include three patrol officers and several reclassifications that you see on this first page. We are also asking that y'all consider taking our patrol from a grade 20 to a grade 22. So that's going to involve some of your salary increases that you see. It has all been figured in this budget by finance. So our significant increases in our operating budget is going to be of two things, and it's technology and vehicles. Okay. Our operating budget increased $223,560. Technology is almost $204,000 for that increase. Our cars have gone up $30,000 because the, the state bid on the four products have gone up. Now the $49,000 that you see includes everything. The in-car system, the lights, the build-outs, everything. Computers. Computers. Yes, sir. Everything. Yes, sir. It's, In it's car a system, car. everything. It's a complete car ready for the road uh, at that price. I think it's 29 something. It's 29, for, 29 the for the car, and then everything else is uh, your light siring, build out computers. So we're not adding that likely. There's 10 cars on there. 10 cars. Computers, is so it's half a million. Same numbers we had last year. Well, that's what I was getting. Yes, yes sir. Okay. No, no increase. There's 30,000. Increase. No, I'm saying okay. the same number. number that's what I was asking. We're, we're not adding any more cars. Yeah. It's the same number, just the price has gone up uh, for a vehicle. Well, what you have in this packet is why I didn't want to get too far ahead. Mm -hmm. Is the breakdown of our sheriff's side of what we're trying to buy and cost. There's a detailed cost of the, mm -hmm. everything we buy through our, through our technology in here. And what we're asking for with explanations, you'll see an increase, decrease in that also. And I'll note on the overtime on 187, I think that's on your, uh, if you've gotten that far, I don't know, I don't want to get ahead of it. That there are reimbursements uh, in that 972. There's an 80,000 for narcotics, the Board of Education, 177,000. 17,000 reimbursement for marshal service. Same for DEA. FBI and ATF is 18,000. So we've got 299,000 of that uh, 972 that will come back to us in the form of reimbursements from these various agencies. But that, will, but that won't be reflected in your bottom line that you haven't gotten it yet. That's correct. We don't have it. Uh, it's as we do it, and we bill it, and then they they reimburse us. Uh, so we have to pay it, but then they reimburse us, and it goes back to the general fund, which is what we we've, we've been doing that each year. It's, this is not anything new. Uh, did you get permission from President Trump to replace your antivirus? Uh, that was actually that a request was, uh, of the FBI. 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 Yeah, the FBI made that request. That, uh, Everyone that since we interface with NCIC FBI, uh, they had problems with yeah, our problems. with our uh, malware. So we had well, to get rid of that Russian there. Yeah, so it's going. And actually, uh, I don't have the number, but the upfront cost on that, but then the per month on that will be less than what we're paying now on the first. 
and I don't right know, it, it may be in a break now. Let's see. Let's see. There should be the end here. You remember the name of it? said over the next year and a half or so, it's going to be $12,000 less. less. It's just the initial. Yeah, the initial cost. Yeah, antivirus is a twelve thousand five hundred sixty-four dollars <coughs> once we get into it. Correct. And it'll be recon computer is what we're going to do. Which I'm being told by our IT people that that's actually a better quality of what we have now. Uh, I think I would think so. So <laughs> <laughs> it may not have any back doors in it, I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. Ask you when you're certified. Oh. Okay, good. That was yeah, 189. Um, they're certified in the um, school system that aren't teachers. I mean, they've been or something in the past, and now they're an administrator. You're certified, you said, was just patrol? Is that what you are certified? No, that the, the, the um, line 80, 189. 189 uh, would be 103 positions, which would be primarily uh, his patrol. Uh, now, that also includes uh, patrol officers that are in warrants, civil warrants, criminal okay. warrants, uh, courthouse security. So they're all certified officers that fall okay. into that, that realm. Okay. I think it funnels out at about 90 for, uh, on patrol and then the rest of them are okay. various yeah. okay. Yes, sir. That's somebody like you or uh, some of the others in administration then? We're in administration, right. although so we're certified, we're not, we're not in that line. I don't know. And I guess certified really is a catch-all because what that is, is is those that are certified through the academy and then and we carry a certification through the mm -hmm. post commission. So mm -hmm. Does that count as SROs? Yes, sir. They're certified also. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So it's roughly going to be 3,000 person? Is that what it works out uh, for a year, roughly? Roughly, it, you know, yeah, be, I mean, it's varies on how it falls out mm -hmm. uh, as to Time. where they are, timing, yeah. grade, and so yeah. forth, uh, as to how it comes out. Some will be far less, and some will be more. Okay. I will, I will tell you now, I feel like I'll, I did high mm -hmm. on that just to be safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there are several increases. I notice there are a lot of decreases. Yes, that's what yeah. I hope you. That's what that's, I did that's, right there. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're trying to point it out or anything. And I also did it on Miss Nolan's paperwork, so mm -hmm. it should uh, reflect the same. And a lot of the, of course, there's some in our uh, salary items, and, and a lot of that, those are things where we control as far as numbers, but as far as the salary benefits and things like that, that's a fairly fixed cost that comes to us by finance, and the rest of it is in the operational expenses where we physically have 100% control of that. And we tried to go through and reduce uh, in the line items where we felt like we could uh, to try to have true budget. Services and uh, that's been decreased. Yes, yeah, sir. It's uh, going to narcotics, and uh, we're going to pay for a lot of that out of narcotics. Mm -hmm. Still got a lot of donations coming in. Yes, sir, we do. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, where we lodge the barn in is free. It's not going to cost us at all. And then uh, we get uh, during the winter months, as far as hay and uh, things of that nature, that's a donation also.
Corporal, was the certified moves you were talking about earlier similar to what Superintendent Cope was talking about? Is that something that has just been earned, or do you no, feel I like feel that like was it the will need help us or to retention? Or? retention. <laughs> that's what I was getting at. I mean, that's where it was built around was where you just can't keep losing folks like this. That's what I was right. getting at. All right, okay. one of the problems we get into on certified is, is every one of these that we lose, if we can't find a certified officer from another agency, uh, then we're going to have post training that we've got to yeah, take three months. Down. Yes, yeah. sir. Three months there that we we've got. Then we're paying them salary. We're paying uh, what three thousand a month. I mean three thousand for the cost. Then we bring mm -hmm. them back, and they've got sixteen weeks of training with us. Right. Uh, so every time we lose one of these people, that that's what we're losing. Seven walking out the door. Training. Yeah. Seven months of yeah. training. Um, when we get through all that, I mean, you've got somebody that's essentially minimally. Trained mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of their experience on the road is where they, they pick up. Right. You get the book learning and everything else, and then you get the real life mm -hmm. uh, once you once you get on the road. Right. And, and you it'd be like mine. The first call I got was something I'd never faced in any of the training I had. So I'm sitting there. It's my like sure. So it, it's a learning experience once you get on the road. Yeah. And, and we probably have had to change in personnel due to the judicial building. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's one thing we'll get into uh, when we get into the jail budget. But there's a, a need that we've got that we have found that uh, uh, we will discuss that on when we get ahead of ourselves on that. But the, but the, uh, the, the new courthouse is uh, going to take some differences in there that we're going to have to adjust to. It's only on the sheriff's side, only a four person increase, three patrol, and then mm -hmm. IT support. And IT person for the courthouse, which that'll be a dual road for courthouse stuff. We're finding that the uh, courthouse is extremely IT intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got Brian Robertson and everything. They've got a big portion uh, that they've got, but then we've got a big portion from the standpoint of communications. Uh, camera feeds that we've got to monitor and then also uh, they're doing the cards for us on access but we control access uh, because of the security type of arrangements and, and uh, so it, it's a the courthouse is going to be a monster I mean it really yeah. is uh, and we're finding unfortunately as we get into this it's kind of like we're finding things uh, that uh, maybe in the initial planning stages what thought of so we're having to kind of play catch up with it uh, we ran into a communications problem immediately where uh, you got down in the basement we had all the inmates and we had no radio communications uh, you, because of the structure you couldn't talk to anybody uh, judges come in down there somebody had a heart attack or whatever we'd have no way of getting a hold of anybody because we couldn't communicate 10 feet into the building the rise of phone won't work uh, so we've had to do some jumping through some hoops to try to get get all that uh, work out which we've got solutions and we're we're installing them, but uh, these things we're finding. I guess it's with any new building, you're, you're going to find some things that uh, I guess it's that marriage period you go through. And that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> so we're looking with three patrol, is that right? Yes, sir. We're talking about adding there. Yes, sir, it is. Seems like that's getting to be a common thing now. It's, it's not, not the exception, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
and I think that's even with the gel and everything combined, I think they could combine a net effect is right around 3738. So for the whole two two budgets put together. Right. Further questions? Okay. Thank you. That's the sheriff. That's the sheriff. 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 Sheriff.
they uh, determine that they need to be assessed in a mental health facility, uh, we're called, and then by law, we're the primary transport. And we're transporting 150 on average a month uh, to some facility. Uh, about 15 to 20 of these a month are going to Memphis. So what I've got is, is two people tied up for a trip to Memphis and back. Uh, so I'm losing two deputies each time. And of course, if you've got two going, then you've got uh, two cars, you, you know, or male, female, if you've got that situation, then you can't transport together. So uh, so that's the reason. What we've done here is we can do what we call uh, cross-trained. They're detention officers. Uh, they're not certified, so we do not have to uh, send them to academy. Uh, we're bringing them in at a lower level than a certified uh, officer, but uh, by law, transport can be a detention officer that's cross-trained. And so that's what we will use for this as opposed to taking a certified officer off the road uh, and sending them to Memphis or to one of the other facilities. Uh, so that's that's the purpose for the other four. The obvious. Is, is Memphis the big facility in the state or something like it's that? It's bed, a bed availability. Uh, it's where they can find a bed. And um, uh, this is a subject that every association meeting we're going to, uh, we, we are trying through association, and this is 95 county strong, uh, to try to change the legislation to where they can move this to somebody else. Uh, but as most of us know, once you're trying to do something like it, it is a slow process trying to get it through. Uh, we haven't really got too far beyond just a talking stage as far as getting anybody interested at this point. Uh, we are continually trying uh, to do that, uh, but right now um, we are mandated by law to, to be the transport. It'll take you at least five years. Uh, you're, you know, I, you, I hate to say it, but you're right. Uh, but we got to keep trying. Uh, we can't give up on it. Mr. Chairman, just a little bit of a question here to clarify this. These eight new positions, the detention officers, now how many did you say you were going to apply toward this transport? Was it four today? Four, yes, four. sir. Four would go to mental health transport. They would also be used if we, of course, obviously we could use them uh, as cross-trained for uh, doctor's appointments and so forth right. within the city. So we could use them for other purposes when they're not transporting on mental health. Now they. The other four officers, was this when they, you were describing how they, they go to the courthouse? They, and they go to be courthouse security because of the need to. They will be in the detention facility detention on facility. the bottom floor uh, where we've got 12 cells, uh, six lined up on two different corners. And uh, so the while we have people there uh, that are incarcerated in those cells, they've got to be monitored. And, and it's for those purposes that they'll be monitored. Because uh, if something happens, such as a fight or something breaks out, then you've got to have somebody that can go in there. We can't have one of our control point people leave a control point to go in there and break that up or anything. So we've got to have a, uh, somebody in there to monitor that. And the uh, the eight additional people we put in this year's budget are still for they just were, security purposes. Yes, they're sir, still they, in here. They were all security. Yes, sir. They're all security. So, yes, sir. And these. Other four are more detention only. They are within detention. the judicial. Yes, sir. They'd be detention only. <clears throat> okay. And while I'm asking a question, uh, oh, you're not down to this loud. I've got this 187. This this overtime pay. Are you really reducing that to thirty thousand dollars? I'm not reducing it to thirty. Well, you got three hundred thousand. Just. Um, there's been updated several times between oh, Lisa and, oh, okay. and I didn't know you were going to, I was the, told uh, you were not going to be here. But I'm not going to make a lot of I thought it was to listen to all this. What that is, is Mayor, is it's, it's an increase of 30,000 from 270 to 300,000. I got that in my summary as far so as the two major increases. increases. It's a $300,000. $30,000. Uh, so you're still requesting the $300,000. I mean, yes, sir. So we're, we're, what we're doing is asking okay. for a $30,000 increase. Okay. If you want to take this budget down to it, our two major increases plus personnel would be our blood medical and our $30,000. If you look at 
the page after this. I guess in the way of them, there's a $693,000 increase in the bill budget. Uh, if we break that down, uh, $131,000 increase of that is the good medical. So if you take that out, uh, bring it down to 562, 108 increase. Uh, then there's another 62,440, which is a JAG grant, which will be coming back to us. Uh, so that would take it down to an uh, increase of 464, 668. Uh, if you look at how it's broken down, uh, the, the Rudd Medical contract, I mean, that's a fix. It was a 3% increase this year, uh, as was fixed by the, uh, as it, you know, was here. Yeah. Well, let me ask. Uh, the CWC Correction Work Center didn't have three percent in there for that, did they? I don't know what they agreed to. I don't know what they're. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, like, juvenile. I don't know. Oh, what I thought y'all had the same contract. When we, we did, did have their separate. Oh, uh, okay. We've got our contract, and then at the same time, uh, we bid all three. Yeah. But they're separate contracts. Okay. Yes, that's wrong, that, but no, that we we only administer the, the detention centers and they administer their own. Do those eight officers get you to where you're comfortable or where you've got a cushion? I mean, I, it's, it's reasonable, it's, but it's that's what I was looking at. Was it you felt like this is a number we can present where we feel like we can breathe a little bit easier, not kick my feet up and relax type easy? It's not a no, it's not a kick your feet up and relax easily. If you wanted to look, I'll, hate to kill you with numbers, but uh, nationally, the average, if you want to look at detention overall, uh, 3.0 to 1 ratio is, is kind of an average nationally. Uh, high end is 4.0 to 1. Uh, we're 5.2 to 1. Uh, so no, we're not yeah. Comfortable, comfortable, but it, uh, I think it's reasonable for what we're trying to do at the new courthouse. It doesn't alleviate the problems that we've got, but I, I think on the other hand, uh, what we're trying to do is recognize that we can't have utopia. Sure. And, I mean, if we if we came in here right now, I'd say to just get ourselves even at the jail, I'd say I need 49 people to get to the 4.0 to 1. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, there's a reasonable way to go about that is you nibble at it each year as sure. opposed to just getting it one time. Yeah, and that's what I was looking at. For and that's trouble next time. Don't be so shy reacting that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> and I think this is a smart move. Uh, it is. Putting this mental health and extradition duties off onto non-certified yeah. officers. I mean, we're, when we pull an officer off the road who's got months and months of training and thousands and thousands of dollars invested versus a month or so of training and a few thousand dollars invested, right. then, you know, we're, we're saving money because, uh, so, that's a real smart move in my opinion. Yeah. When we came in, all of our transport was certified. And, and I mean, there's no reason for that. There's no... Uh, mandate for that there is right. no so yeah. so what we tried to do even when the new courthouse opened is we took our certified transport <laughs> and moved them to augment what was required for the courthouse and then we backfilled with the detention officers mm -hmm. and the cross training. Yeah. Uh, but the, that's for the judicial building over there now that you know that's something totally different from what we ever we have before. Yes, so, I mean, mm -hmm. the way it's set up down there. It is and, and I admit I mean we uh, We've been, in fact, I was over there again today. Uh, we've got a gentleman in that, uh, gosh, what has he got, 30-something years with post. He's retired. He teaches now, and he's having a heart attack over it. <laughs> because he, he's, he strictly looks at it totally from security. And, uh, you know, he's got people jumping off of chandelier, and I said, you know, hey, let's get reasonable. <laughs> so, uh, but, I mean, I understand where he's coming from. That's what he does sure, for a yeah, living. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but what we're trying to do here is, is get to a level where we feel like we could monitor inmates in a safe manner. Uh, what we're setting up is, is a mini detention facility there uh, at, the, at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. If you look at this at a whole, and this is something the sheriff and I have looked at twice, but if you take away Dr. Rudd's contract, we are actually decreasing our operating budget in the jail by four hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. Okay. 
and that's just our operator. And I think you've got four or five numbers in a row that will explain a lot of that. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we approve the jail budget as presented. You have a motion? Second. Second. I just looked at 422. That's the one we talked about earlier. And it's it the lowest I think I've seen it quite some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing that. I mean, I'm not going to be. I think, well, I'm back and ask for money. I feel like right that's about a fair number. Something thousand dollars for a budget amendment this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This is uh, easy, our 122 transfer and 121, which is all relating to our drug funds. Okay. Uh, 122 will go on narcotics enforcement. We have their budget at about $603,000. It's just not showing. This was given to us uh, December 31st. Oh, okay. okay, so that is, they yeah. have. And what does the ease, what, how much per a vehicle for them? 30,000? Mm -hmm. We'll that? try to keep it. Simple example? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're trying it until 28, 29, 30. Right. Okay. Now, I will say, too, as far as, of course, it's not in the drug fund, but because of our associations that we've been able to build with the FDIT down so forth. We have a vehicle that is furnished to one of our uh, detectives now mm -hmm. by the FBI, fully paid for, we don't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there's some advantages to some of the uh, affiliations that we've got with some of our sister agencies that we have not had before. Any questions on 122? Mm -hmm. There's no entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve as requested and forward to budget. Second. Motion is second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 They are 122 would be the cost of their overtime at the end of the year. You know they reimburse us. We're going to take that to what it actually cost and to include benefits to pay back the general fund. Uh, based on an $80,000 overtime, that's going to be a total of $94,648 that will be transferred back into the general fund. I make a motion to approve Which one the transfer, or I'm sorry, the it's uh, well, uh, one, 122. 122, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You got a second on that? So it's, it's coming back the, the other way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a, okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Motion carried. Uh, Special uh, purpose. Uh, 121 DEA and now a customs border. Uh, money that we receive. As you know, we can't budget this. It's 121 We're going to request 10, and then at the beginning of the new budget year, I'll come back and put those in the proper mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Move its approval. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Sex offender registry, 54160. This could be having a lower salary this year, it might be getting a bump. But our total is going to be $76,634. We did take the overtime out of that. And adjusted it and see how did it. So five four one six seven. No, that's the next one. Isn't it? No, that's no, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's confusing. Really. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Quite a bit of difference. Yeah, there is quite a bit of difference. Okay. Any questions or motions on it? Move to approve and send the budget. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Our next is from our special patrol, which is Lake Patrol. It is 54120. This is a contracted price with the state to do the Lake Patrols, and the total is going to be $43,605. And I think it covers 103 patrols. And they'll pay the benefits and everything. Okay. Do they tell you when to go out there? Or can you, we you know. It's we the schedule. Yes, it's a contract. Okay. Schedule. Okay. Holidays, weekends. Okay. Any questions? Late, late duty? Not one or ten motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve. We have a second. And a second. <coughs> Questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Final. 5413 <laughs> traffic control. This is pretty much a standard of $20,000 for the highway department when we do extra duty for them to keep everybody from getting run over. <laughs> what? Oh. Traffic control. Traffic control. Traffic control. Yeah. Make a motion to approve. Second. And motion is second. Questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Amen. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It very appreciate it. Easy to understand. Thanks. Very I like well these. You know, I mean, you got the sheet. I was thinking, well, it took a while to realize we, were, we had some duplicates in there. But we we had, well, 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 which, no, I don't mean on each one, but we had this sheet. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a word. You can keep those, yeah. They're yours. You know, it's just like, would you send me a, you tell a little kid. Don't touch control. 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 We ran out of reusable things last year, so we're not on yet. Yeah, we lost it. We reused some things last year. We did that. Yeah, or so. okay. Mayor, I'm sorry. Oh, we've got. <laughs> did you have? Uh, and I meant to ask this a minute ago. The MOU, or was this something? Or do we need? Even? No, you guys. We got it. We're okay. Oh, okay. 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 Good. Um, okay. Next month we meet on the May 29th, a Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day. Uh, that's okay. okay. I have one other business item I'd like to bring forward. Oh, okay. Maybe you're ready. Okay, this is transitional housing. Our recovery courts have a need, a lot of need for this from time to time. The Murfreesboro Housing Authority has refurbished and remodeled one of their units, which will has, is a five bedroom unit. We can put five women in there for $1,125 a month. Now we will collect money from these occupants based on their ability to pay, so it won't be the full amount of money. But we think this is really, really a great opportunity for us to see if we can help provide continued stability and recovery for these folks. So I'm asking you to uh, authorize us to spend $1,125 a month and see if this will work. It's, it's for a one year 
uh, agreement. So one year contract? One year contract and, and I think it has real potential for really helping some people that sure. need a place to stay and not sending them back to the places they usually they were, have come yeah. from. Yeah, their so, environment they were in. So that's what this is about and uh, we want to start this May the 1st so we won't take it on the budget and uh, get a little bit of forgiveness on it but if, if, if you guys will bless it first it would it would help us at budget. Yeah. We need a motion. Trey mentioned something. We, we need a motion for you to allow us to uh, I'll make a motion sign this memorandum of understanding with the Mercer Housing Authority. I'll make the motion to allow. Okay. We got a motion for the request. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Well, all four of the court, all four of the courts. I don't know where they'll take. get their women out of, out of which courts. I don't know where they'll come, but I think there's all the flexibility we need there. That'll be our choice. Mm -hmm. And does somebody monitor them? Okay. There, one of these will be one of our more advanced people in the program, and that will be the house monitor. Okay. All right. Okay. Any further questions? And this is one budget. Yes, send this on the budget, please. All uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I guess what we need to do with that because I had ball of money. It's a contract. That's fine. Okay. Oh. And we'll have a budget amendment to how, to, how we're going to pay for this. Anybody have anything else? Yeah. Oh. In case everybody forgot, the open house oh, is yeah. Wednesday for the new judicial center. At 4 p.m. to 5 30. But we need to be I there at 3 30 or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. 3 30. 3 30 yeah. ish. Or the public needs to be there at 4. You need to be there at 3 30. <laughs> oh, perfect. Right. Where is parking? The garage. The parking garage. Sure. There's plenty it's of parking cool. there. Still. Is, that, is that ours or the city of Murfreesboro or do they get it kept? Uh, okay. It's our parking okay. garage. Okay. Well, it's, it's a public parking garage. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's never more than half full right now. Right now. Yeah. Less yeah. than that since the construction workers are oh, yeah. but it's going to be gone. Be gone. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. There's nothing else. We're adjourned. Oh.